When it comes, there'll be little doubt about the verdict and the sentence is likely to be a lengthy one. But this case is about much more than the fate of one woman now. Nadia Savchenko has become the embodiment of a conflict that defies resolution. Gabriel Gatehouse there. Well, joining me now in the studio is Marina Pesenti, who's director of the Ukrainian Institute in London, and from Moscow, Katya Mavrinkova, news editor at RT, formerly uh, Russia Today. Um, Marina, I'll start with you, because it's hard to sort of overstate how important the case is seen in Ukraine and in what high regard Nadia Savchenko is held there. Absolutely. It's a very symbolic and high-profile case for Ukraine. And uh, I think um, there's a mixture of feelings the way Ukrainians regard this case. On one, um, on one hand, it's a sense of admiration over the courage and determination and fearlessness that she has displayed, uh, being in a very difficult situation with all the odds staked against her. She managed to turn the tables and uh, change the situation, the rules of the game. On the other hand, it's a feeling of indignation. The actual fact that uh, Russian Federation, apart from the fact that it's annexed part of our territory and unleashed the war in another part of the country, it also kidnaps our citizens um, and uh, brings charges against them um, on their territory um, in, uh, on, you know, on very trumpeted charges, in fact. Was she, was she known before she was captured? No, she was not known. She didn't have a public profile. Right. But she was the, I mean, she was the, she was in Iraq. She had been fighting. She was the, I think, the only woman in, in the Ukrainian right. Air Force. So she, she was a notable character. Well, That's right. Uh, probably she was better known in military uh, milieu mm -hmm. uh, because she's the only, as you said, female pilot and she's a graduate of a prestigious uh, aviation school in Kharkiv and she also fought in Iraq. But yes, previously she didn't have a public profile. Okay. Did, is, is, do you have any regrets over the killing of those Russian journalists? I certainly have regrets over the loss of any human life, but I find it quite um, paradoxical that Russia thinks it, it's a completely legitimate course of action when it kidnaps a citizen of another country and then brings charges against that citizen in its own country. Uh, and in fact, we talk about what's happened between, you know, if we for a second, for a split second, imagine that the charges uh, are fair, that it is a crime committed by one Ukrainian citizen against other Ukrainian citizens because apart from Russian journalists who died in that incident, there were also some civilians. And Russia claims that it, it doesn't conduct any warfare against Ukraine. It stands for territorial integrity of Ukraine. And on the other hand, uh, you know, it, um, it runs, uh, it conducts a trial of Ukrainian citizens in on Russia. its territory. Right. Well, where do you see the status of this now? Is it now just reach a stasis, Marina? and it's over and it's going to stay like this indefinitely? Uh, I think it is uh, far from over because uh, literally yesterday and day before yesterday there were reports from the Ministry of Defense uh, reporting uh, clashes and exchange of fire and um, shooting from the uh, rebels side and also there was an OSCE report just a few years ago uh, admitting that even though the artillery fire somewhat diminished uh, there's been cases of um, uh, rocket propel um, rocket grenade launches. So in terms of military activity, it's still ongoing. And I think even more importantly, one has to remember that this is a hybrid war, which has lots of elements to it, um, security right. forces operations, informational element, and this is ongoing.